Hello, I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energies. Well, somebody says, how high do you have to have it? Actually, about 20 foot up, but you know, I don't want to get it up anywhere near these power lines. Cool thing is, this right here is a field. Nice long field. Uh, if I took it up about another 10 foot, it'd do all right, but it's fall and winter, and there's nothing on the trees, so it slows the wind down a little bit, but not much. But I still get decent uh, wind here. The wind in the forecast was uh, about 7 miles per hour. Earlier it was about 10 to 10 to 15, but that was in the gust. So anyway, down here, it's a nice day. 82 degrees. 82 degrees. And this is January 23rd, <laughs> 2013. Hello, I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and Other Home Energies. Today, we're going to learn about a charge controller system. And there's the one I bought from Missouri Wind and Solar. I blew the circuit board inside. There's the other charge controller. Uh, the circuit's at home. I blew the trace off the board. So I bought another one from Coleman Air. And after being on the phone, I said, can I show them the circuit in your book? And they said yes. That was uh, Craig himself. And they're about 80 miles away from here. And Missouri Wind and Solar uh, also uh, authorized me to show them this. So we're going to learn how to wire this up and talk about it a little bit and watch it work. Right now we're at 13.4 volts and you see the amp meter, the wind root just is going to pick up just a little bit, enough to top the battery off a little bit and then it's going to kick on this dump load. It's only 50 watts. I could probably add one more to it and be alright. See the LED blinking right here. When it blinks four times, it's at 12.5 to 13 volts. When it blinks five times like it just did, 13 to 13.5. Right now it's on solid. That means it's 13.5 and above. And it just started blinking again, so there we are at 13.4. It must have went above 13.5. Well, it looks like we're kicking something into here. It's going to trip. That's about 2 amps going in. 24 watts. Not too bad right now. I like it when it does 8 amps. That's much better. 13.44. I'm going to leave the camera on. There we go. 13.8. The charge controller kick diverted the load from the battery for five seconds. It also comes with a test right here. If I push this, this will kick on for up to five minutes until it drains the battery down to the uh, to another trip voltage. Now we're putting in right here so it's going to be a bit. 13.05. Gets down to about 12.2 and it'll kick back on. And it kicked back off. Now we're watching the LED flash again. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. Doing pretty nice. Let's get into the manual a little bit. 13.05. Mmm, gotta love it. Okay, here's diagrams that came from Missouri Wind and Solar. This is disconnect mode. This is how you wire for disconnect, mainly for solar panels. Uh, there's a few applications you can do a disconnect mode with. Anyway, this is a 12 volt solenoid switch. This is the charge controller from Coleman Air. From this point to this point, these two connections connect to a coil inside, which pull an armature away from these two back to these two. So this one is normally on until voltage is applied across here and current flows, magnetizing the armature and it pulls it back to here. And then these two are connected. Well, this is, uh, this is for diversion mode. This basically says when your solar panels charge the battery up to the threshold, then this charge controller will send the current over here to this coil and actuate this to the diversion mode. Basically this is staying connected, charging your batteries until they get to the threshold, then it pops up and lets your batteries drop back down, then it connects again. Now this one over here is the diversion mode. This was the disconnect mode. It disconnects your solar panels. This is the diversion mode and you have a dump load. It has to equal what your wind turbine can put out and I suggest a little more. Anyway, now you see the wires are connected from here to here. The charge controller goes to the battery on the positive and the negative. The positive comes over to the positive. The negative comes over to the negative on the wind turbine. Also, the negative goes up to the di uh, diversion load. From the positive, this path runs over here, goes to here. This is disconnected until power is applied here when it's full. Goes into here, goes through a fuse if you want, 
and then you uh, connect it to your diversion load. This diversion load can be an electric heater. It could be uh, going into your hot water heater as uh, with a element, or you can put it in lights and turns this on when the plunger comes up. And this is connected, drains the battery down. This senses the voltage and tells it when to uh, release the dump load. And then it kicks back on. And usually this is about five seconds, unless you press the test button. If you press this test button right here, what it's going to do, if you press it several times, it'll uh, stay on for about five minutes. If you uh, press it one time and not long, uh, it'll go into a five second dump just for a test. So let's see that. And the dummy load is on. 50 watts, not putting anything in. Let's watch, we got 13.25. Well, five seconds is up. I think it's gonna stay on for five minutes. It must have pressed it funny, but anyway. And it kicked back off. It tries back every five seconds to see if it's uh, in below threshold and didn't drop down for a few cycles and it finally did so now we're off. Okay so there's the picture on the front comes uh, comes with this relay right here that's a 40 amp relay. Coleman Air Model C40 charge controller is a compact simple to use controller specifically designed for use with moderate wind and small solar system. The unit is supplied with one 40 amp relay Additional relays can be purchased to increase the total amperage as high as 160 amps. And this one over here basically says up to 440 amps. That's because of the relay set over there or the solenoid actuated relay. Anyway, I could have left this one on it, but I already had this and all I had to do is swap the board over when I blew the other board and had to order this one. Microprocessor controlled, user changeable settings, high amp rating of 40 amps, uh, battery status LED that tells you how much, a push to test, and steel enclosure, easy termination, simple to install, reverse polarity protection, that's a big diode inside that says uh, current can't flow in the wrong direction, so it saves the uh, microprocessor and all the parts from getting blown. Versions 2.0 and greater now have extended diversion mode, these do. I'll show you what that is. Uh, it's just a little jumper inside that you can move. The extra diversion mode means that the uh, diversion mode stays on for five minutes. EDM, extended diversion mode. All right, ability to divert the source from the batteries to the load or dump both batteries along with the source. Anyway, so when it says uh, one flash indicates less than 12 volts, two flashes indicate the battery is 12 to 12.3. Three flashes indicate that the battery is 12.4 to 12.7. That's a fully charged lead acid battery at rest. That's after it's been charged and sitting. Four flashes indicates the battery is 12.8 to 13.0 volts. Five flashes indicates the battery is above 13.1 volts, but less than 13.5 volts. Steady green means the battery is full and the settings are adjustable for the full that's the trip threshold and setting is are adjustable changing the trip point will alter the flash levels of the green LED anyway I'll show you where the uh, diversion mode is the steady green light means the battery is full and I'll look up on the meter and it'll say about 13.6 or somewhere around there and bip it kicks on the diversion controller diverts the power from the batteries diverts the power from the batteries to the top two on this solenoid comes back and goes to the light and basically this is just wired uh, one of these wires here goes to the negative on the battery the positive runs through and it goes through that switch and comes back and goes to the positive on the battery anyway so that's about how all that works and I'll show you what I did wrong what I did wrong was trying to adjust the trip uh, I was trying to adjust the trip point and I wanted it to power the Edison NICAD battery so I was going to adjust the trip point but I left it plugged in and when I put it back into the case I shorted out the top of one of the transistors and it blew a trace right off the board. I think I can replace the uh, trace. Uh, I think the part is still good. The trace is pretty thin so that's good news for me. Anyway I'll show you all that when I get home and put it back in here and then I'll have one for my Edison NICAD railroad batteries. There's another set over here. I'm anxious to hook them all up. Those two sets uh, right over there, they're 1.2 volts each. And it, Let me get this off here. They're 1.2 volts each uh, for each cell. 
and there's 10 of them so I've got 12 volts even I want it to uh, kick off right at about 12.8 or 13 volts just to drop it down a bit anyway this uh, set right here it's not uh, doing so well we're trying to revive it along with this set here I'm gonna be trying to rejuvenate these batteries I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energies many good things to you and yours and these batteries here the Edison NICAD railroad batteries are uh, sitting at about 13.7 13.79 actually and the wind has died something I wanted to show you here I have this set up so all I got to do is push it around see right here I can tell if it's twisted or not down here I have turned this one turn one direction and a few weeks later I turned it one turn the other direction and it's still sitting right where I first set it now it's pointed this way. The wind does change direction, but usually it doesn't go in a full circle as it changes the direction. So it's not that often. This has been up right at about two months, I believe. So that's not bad. Just check it every two weeks or once a month. It's not really doing much here. Wind doesn't change much direction, predominantly out of the south, which is the direction I'm facing. And looks like the last wind was from the north. It's cooling off. I'm still in a t-shirt and feeling fine. So I'm hoping it's going to stay warm and get some more work done for the rest of the night. Anyway, let's look over here. Oops, two of them are touching. Not where it's going to mess up the finish. But anyway, got one. Looking really nice. Two. Try to get some of the reflection on here, show you the beauty in them. Three. And each one of them, I've got the, uh, I did the measurement, found dead center. Made sure it's square up and down. I will drill a hole later. But basically, they all got a screw dead center. A drywall screw. Because it has a nice point where I can get the perfect center of them. It's leaning to the side because... I want it that way. I've got the knot to the side. It makes it lean down. When I turn it straight across to where I'm looking at the screw like this, the prop is perfectly level, just like this one. This one's set up. adds a little bit off. But anyway, here's the last one. Looking pretty good. Let's see if we can get a little reflection off it. Oh yeah, nice reflections off it that way. See the Jeep. I think it's looking pretty good. Nice and pretty. Anyway, I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energies. Many good things to you and yours. When I get home, I'll show you the other charge controller circuit that I burnt the thing off of. Ooh, pretty. <laughs> nice stain. You take care. I'm Scott Brown, Green Wind, another home energy. Here's another cool thing, kind of a floating shelf. Uh, made out of one of them futon beds, you notice all the cables going straight up to the ceiling. This is hanging, and I can lay lights on it, and I've got two lights laying on it right there. Getting back to the regular shots, now you can see, I can see a lot better. This is going to make much better videos. I'll be able to do a lot more down here at night. I like the yellow from the tail light. Kind of gives a real light to the fluorescent light. This is sitting down close and lower. And the good thing is, I can move it around a little bit. That's fine. And it's on some really good cable there.